Law is one of the major factors in the organization of the economy uh, and in the capacity of governments to influence, uh, influence what happens in the economy. So both in terms of the organization of industries, companies, uh, through private law, plus the capacity of governments through public law, influences the capacity of a country to articulate and a goal and then reach it. So that's, you know, and then you just have to go into every single area of law and say, what about this, what about that? And again, there are no uniform rules. Each country has to develop for itself and learn for itself what works and what doesn't work. Again, they can learn a little from studying each other, but not, there's no secret book that you can pull out and say, oh, this is what you need to do. It's a uh, fundamental uh, question if we think about uh, pr promoting development in a democratic context, because at the same time you want to promote progress. You also want to keep uh, uh, and guarantee rights and, and then promote the inclusion uh, of new actors in, in the economy and the political context. But definitely it's not a trivial relationship. In many cases, uh, law ends up being an obstacle for development, uh, such as we see now in Brazil in cases of excessive bureaucracies for the uh, procurement of, 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 of projects in, in the implementation of infrastructure. But at the same time, uh, law is definitely the, the tool that allows uh, for uh, the protection of rights and, 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 and minorities and respect for, for their identities in the process of development. There are many ways by which you can uh, tackle this question. Of course, one way, a very traditional one, is to, first of all, try to understand how law could be a barrier, an obstacle for economic development. But this is just one aspect of the question. The other aspect is how can legal institutions forge or uh, uh, create incentives for economic development, such as, for example, how uh, regulatory agencies can uh, formulate more flexible, more dynamic way to deal with the regulation of some specific markets. Uh, another way, which I think is very important too, is how can new patterns of contractual relationships can be established. Uh, for example, more relational contractings, more cooperative uh, joint ventures, which I think are, uh, also play a very important and strategic role in terms of economic and social development nowadays. Law not only regulates economic processes, it also creates the institutions and the actors who participate in them. So law, many of the basic legal forms, credit, rent, property, are legal forms. And from that point of view, we can easily understand that legal arrangements made differently will lead to economies that run differently. Actors that have different incentives, different powers, and different distribution of capacities to injure one another, to benefit from one another's work and productivity and so forth. So law is integral to the background structure that makes not only development, but all economic activity possible. Arranging law differently means you could have economies that work differently. I think the, the, the tools we, we actually need now to deal with uh, uh, development issues, especially with distribution, wealth distribution issues, are, uh, I don't know if mainly, but are strongly legal. You need, you need law uh, to occupy the space that it hasn't been occupying for decades, that has been occupied uh, uh, by economists 
that are not worried about wealth transfer uh, issues and law has to, is the one to worry about that. So I think law has a central role in law and development. That's a big question and an old question. It's, uh, my view is that the relationships are, are many and multifaceted, but that basically uh, legal development and economic political development work. Uh, it's in a reciprocal relationship. Um, legal development is sometimes necessary for economic development, but economic development in turn demands additional legal development so that there's a reciprocal, ongoing, complex relationship between the two. The answer has to do with, with politics, ultimately, and with the evolution of the way in which the government interferes with society in the modern world. Roughly speaking, in Western style, Western uh, democracies, uh, policy is implemented through law. Uh, a justifiable concern with predictability has meant that uh, political intervention is nowadays set in terms of law. The fact that politics plays out by, uh, through legal means means that policies carry the risk of litigation. Given that, lawyers are moved immediately and unavoidably to the forefront of policy. The implication is that the legal system ends up refracting politics. Politics set out the general direction of policy. However, because policy is implemented through law, the final result might be different from what the original political impulse has established. To sum up, legal knowledge matters for develop in the sense that it constrains policy and lawyers can be thought in many ways as experts in this refraction.